Hi everybody, welcome to the fourth video of my Unity 3D series tutorials, tutorial series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to create some waypoint system, very basic waypoint system. And in the later videos, we're actually going to use this waypoint system for uh, moving our moving characters in the game, especially anime characters. They're going to be following a certain point system, and uh, we'll implement this for those characters, computer characters. So first I'm going to start creating a script called this is a C sharp script. Let's call this um, enemy AI and double click the script to open it up. And this script is going to have at least two public fields move speed and rotate speed let's make it 80 okay and it's also going to have a transform array which is actually the actual waypoints i'm going to call this waypoints uh, it will have a current like target waypoint let's say target vp so the target vp vp wp is actually the waypoint that the object is currently trying to go for example when you first start you're at waypoint 0 so you're going to waypoint 1 so target will be wp would be the the first waypoint that's in the second waypoint in the waypoints array uh, then I'm going to have the an integer uh, target waypoint index. So this index will determine the target WP inside the waypoints. And I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, another float here, I just like to group different uh, the same data types together. Uh, distance so this will be the distance to the next waypoint to the target waypoint right between the object and and the target waypoint now uh, let's go back to the editor and I am going to create a game object 3d a, a capsule right so we have the capsule here uh, for this capsule to stand out I'm going to create a new material and let's make this red it's going to be a red capsule like this and i'm going to add this red material to the this capsule and uh, i'm going to name it um, enemy it's going to be our enemy later right now it's pretty friendly it doesn't do anything but later it's going to be an enemy and i'm going to create an empty game object so remember a game object everything in the scene is a game object you can imagine game objects as a container for components. As you add more components, they become more functional, but everything is actually a game object. And I'm going to call this waypoints. Now, in order, if I click something else, I, I, I don't see it in the scene because it's an empty game object. Therefore, I want to make sure there's a label for this thing. So I'm going to go, you see this cube-like thing, click on that and choose a color you would like. I'm gonna go with the gray. Now I know the waypoints is here. So whenever I want to actually work with the waypoints, I can just click on there, okay? And you won't see that in the game view. You will only see that in the scene view. So every waypoint will be the child of this object. Uh, I'm going to create a, another game app. So right click on the waypoints, create empty that is going to create a child object so actually they have a relationship hierarchical relationship and this will be a child object of the waypoints right and if you look at its position it's actually relative to its parent object now also give this one a tag so you can see now another thing is when you move a parent object or rotate a parent object, the child object will 
uh, move or rotate or it will scale with the parent object. So that will come in handy later on. Now we have our waypoints object. Um, and then let's start from zero. And then I'm going to create four waypoints. So the one is at the zero, zero. The second one is going to be at uh, five to the X position. Two is going to be to the 10 points right. Three is going to be um, 15 points to its right. And then maybe let's do one more. And this one will be minus 10 points to its um, back. Right, so this object is going to start from this, and it's going to go there, 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 and then it's going to come back, go there, and go back, right? And if you move these waypoints, it's going to change its uh, direction as well. Now, I'm going to uh, go ahead and here I'm going to show you how you can actually manually install these waypoints. So click on the enemy, and I'm going to close this, and go to scripts drag and drop enemy AI. Now you see all the values are here and the waypoints is here. So you have to make it, how many waypoints we have? One, two, three, four, five different waypoints. And you have to drag and drop each of them here. Or that's, that's the hard way. I mean, if you have a couple of them, that's perfectly fine to do. But I'm gonna show you a way which is faster. If, imagine you have 100 waypoints, right? You wouldn't wanna do that. So I'm going to create a, a transform object that is waypoints parent object. And I'm going to get the children of this object, assign them to the waypoints array. So at the beginning of my, um, when, when, when this, this script starts to run, I'm going to call a method called get waypoints. Right, and the get waypoints will uh, get the children object, children transform of the waypoints parent transform. So for first of all, number of waypoints, uh, num of waypoints equals uh, waypoints parent dot child count. It will return the number of children. For example, right now, if this is going to be our waypoints parent, it's going to return its number of ch its children, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we need it because we're going to initialize an array. You need to know the number of elements that's going to take place in the array. Therefore, you need to um, get the number, child count. Okay, and then inside my array, in my for loop, I'm going to traverse for each element integer um, i equals zero, i is less than, oh, before that, I'm going to initialize my array, waypoints equals new transform, and number of waypoints. So this is gonna allocate memory for uh, five, in this case, five transform objects. So now I can use waypoints.length. Right, and I plus plus, and then waypoints I equals waypoints parent. Now I'm now I'm accessing each child element. That get using the get child method, get child I. So, and I want to make sure this method runs in the start. If you don't put it in the start, it's never going to be called. So now let's look at it here. It's compiling, compiled. So <clears throat> enemy, right? The waypoints parent is the waypoints object here. You can actually call it parent if you if it's gonna make it easier for you to remember. So drag and drop the waypoints parent here. Now right now you see that waypoint. There's no waypoints, right? But when we run the game, it's actually gonna run the method and it assigned each single waypoint to the waypoints array. Once they are assigned there, we can actually start going through them one by one. 
Um, so I'm going to create a method called void follow waypoints. Right. And it's going to be following waypoints inside the update method, which is a continuous option. Now, uh, how do we do this? First, you pick a waypoint. That will be your target waypoint. And then when you actually get to that waypoint, then you change your target waypoint. Now, how do I know which target, if, if I'm at the target waypoint or not? We're going to check out the distance. So remember the distance variable here. We're going to be using that one here. Distance equals. Now, I'm going to use the vector three dot distance method. This method takes two different position and it gives you the actual distance between those two positions. Right now, my uh, distance between my position, my object's position, and the, the position of the target waypoint will give me the distance. So transform that position, and then waypoints, now target waypoint index, at the moment, it's zero. It's not increased yet. Dot position. I'm going to say if the distance is greater than one, means keep going to that, keep going towards that waypoint. Else, if it's less than one or equal to one, means it's time to get to a new waypoint because we're almost there. So it's time to update the waypoint, right? Then in that case, you we're going to increase the index, right? But so here's the here's the deal. If the target index, let's say you're at the fourth waypoint and you got five waypoints. So you get to the waypoint 5 and then from there you cannot do go to you cannot increase the index to six because it's going to throw an array out of bounds exception, right? So if it gets there, then you you have to reset your waypoint system. It has to go back to the zero waypoint zero, or you have to go back to the four. Um, either way, you cannot just go to a waypoint that does not exist. So in this case, I'm going to check if target waypoint index equals to uh, waypoints dot length then then target waypoint index will be zero okay otherwise you can increase it if it's this is the case then you go back to the zero and uh, when this happens then the, the target waypoint will be waypoints target VP index. Okay, so we're updating our target waypoint. And that's great. Now, if it's still not there, if we still reach, didn't reach the target waypoint, then I'm going to make this... Um, object move towards there. Now how do I do that? I have to find the uh, the direction vector like we did in the previous videos. Direction equals target vp dot position minus transform that position. So this will actually return the direction I should be heading. Okay. It's just a uh, vector three mat mat mathematics and when you take the difference between two vectors, two positions, that the vector will give you the direction that you should take to get to the uh, position your head you want to end up. Uh, I'm not going to go detail with that, but this is how you find out. And here, I'm going to use the translate method, transform the translate. I'm going to enter direction. I'm going to multiply that with the move speed, okay? 
and multiply that with time that delta time. Now let's see how it works and we'll see if you need to update anything. So you know the compiled. So make sure to check out how things change here. So I'm gonna put this enemy a little bit away from the waypoints. And let's start moving. Now we have a problem, it's not working. And the target waypoint is there. The variable target waypoint of enemy has not been assigned. So if you you can double click this error, and it normally for some reason there's a bug right now, it's not doing it for me, but it should take you to where the problem is happening. So the problem is happening currently because this variable has not been initialized, it's null, but yet it's trying to access it uh, here and that's what's breaking it, I think. Or, yeah, something like that. We have to initialize that at the, at the start method. So target VP should be waypoints uh, zero, right? Or you can just use directly the target VP index. Let's make it zero. Okay. Um, let's see what's gonna happen now. Oh, now you see it's it's moving. Though it's moving pretty fast. Maybe let's make the move speed two, three. So it goes to waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three, and the first one. Now if I actually change my waypoints, it follows the waypoints. But it kind of starts fast and slows down as it gets closer to each waypoint. So I'm going to fix that by normalizing the direction vector. Um, the direction vector here, it depends on the difference between two positions, right? But as it gets closer to a position, it also slows down because the, the, the distance between two positions are getting smaller. To, in order to prevent that, I'm going to do normalized, normalize these this this direction vector which is gonna make it so if it's if it's actually something like five zero three this is gonna be normalized and it's gonna be one zero one so, um, so it's it's gonna make the unit vector okay and that way it's going to run smoother it's not gonna get affected by the distance change Right. The only thing is that uh, my capsule is going to to position zero at at a certain position. No, it's going. It's taking the value of the y, which is zero. Then it 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 sort of goes too low. Now you can either put the uh, waypoints up. Okay, it's flying now or you can actually code in a way that the cylinder doesn't really change its Y position so it might come in handy later uh, I'm gonna make it this way direction equals new vector 3 so it should still go to the same X it should still go to the same Z positions but it should remain in its own Y position, right? So transform position dot Y. Therefore, its height will not be affected by the change. So let's see what happens now. Uh, that didn't work out too good. It just took off. Um, position Y, is it because it's normalized? Let's see. 
Okay, um, transform translate space dot world. Z. Okay, something is something interesting is happening here. Oh, now it's not. This is not the direction I should modify. Actually, I should be modifying the um, transform position equals new vector three transform uh, dot position dot x and then 0.5 will be my height so I don't want this height to be changed and transform dot position dot z so now it should work out and the cube should remain at 0.5 which is the correct height for him Yes, it's working out, and I can make it slower. Uh, the unit vector, I, I'm going to add the normalize back here, and then, that's great. Now, even if I actually, at this point, even if I raise a waypoint up, he still doesn't go there. But... He actually gets stuck now because the distance between two is greater than one. So if I lower it, it says, okay, I went there and it keeps moving. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next tutorial.